Hello, welcome back to Math Time with Professor Prime, and I'm your host as always, Professor Prime. And today we're going to talk about math and gaming. We're going to talk about my background with gaming, and then I'm going to talk about how math is used in gaming in general, but also specifically with some of the games that I mentioned. And I am looking forward to it. And uh, I wanted to kind of give an idea of the game that inspired me to do this. And then we'll kind of go from there. I hope you all have fun with it. I plan to have fun with it. Math means a lot to me. Gaming means a lot to me. And that combination, it's a beautiful thing. So, shall we begin? Yes. First and foremost. I have a math and gaming series, which is an offshoot of my math in the world series. Um, and so videos were gonna happen regardless. But this particular one was inspired by Horizon Zero Dawn. One of the best games that I have ever played. It took me forever to finally play it, but it's been on my list for a while. And I have played it like, um, Pretty close to the time of this recording and it is just oh my god so amazing great gameplay great story and it just reminds me of just what a game can be and how it could really get you thinking about some things because I don't want to go into spoilers I don't um, but I will say and this isn't a spoiler I will say that it's a like it's it's a very very like serious and interesting game that makes you think about like humanity and some of the things that we might need to think about that we should absolutely be thinking about. Um, with that in mind, I'll get to that in more depth. But I want to start at the beginning and then kind of go from there. And after we're done with that, like I said in the beginning, we'll talk about math and gaming. I'm sorry, like uh, how math is used in gaming in general. And then in regards to some of the games that I'm going to mention. So in the beginning, as far as I can remember, my first game was Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. Yes, the first one back on the Sega Genesis. You know, Sega. <laughs> I, I, I really liked that whole thing, and it's just like, it, it died over the years, you know? They stopped saying it, and it sucks. But anyway, um, so I used to play that, um, and as far as I could tell, um, this was back when I was six, um, when that first happened, and I, there was a few other games on that one, but that is the one that has stuck with me. And so as you can imagine, with Sonic being my first game, it has been a roller coaster. <laughs> Year after year, you know, because like the first three Sonic games, or I guess four, uh, were really good. I say I guess four because, so you had Sonic 1, you had uh, Sonic 2, you had Sonic 3, and then you had Sonic and Knuckles. But Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were pretty much one game that got divided into two, to the point where you can even put them together and have Sonic 3 and Knuckles. But either way, those were all stellar games. Like, they were where Sonic became a legend. And games since have either deviated from it horribly or they failed to live up to what was there. For the most part. There have been some notable exceptions, i.e. Sonic Mania. Um, but that was more, you know, being like the older games and actually being successful. But my point is, it's been a roller coaster with Sonic, and there's been so many different, um, you know, ways that Sonic has popped up in different, like, media, uh, sorry, different mediums, i.e., he's been in comics and movies and all that stuff, and yeah, there are some shows. There was, like, two that were, I think, going on at once in the 90s, like, so that was kind of crazy, and I think Jaleel White played on both of them. Um, it's been a while, <laughs> but I think one was really good, and one was less good. <laughs> but anyway, so Sonic was my first game. It's left an impression, and it does sadden me to see Sonic go back and forth, but nothing will take away the fact that that was my first game, and that I enjoyed um, Sonic for a while. Um, side note, I didn't actually play Sonic CD, like, 
at length. But I did find out more about that as I got older, and just like, man, that's a crazy game. But that being said, so yeah, my first system was Genesis, and uh, my first game was Sonic. Now, in terms of big games, I did play a lot of games uh, between time of six and the next big game that came up, which was like 15, but there wasn't a lot of notable games. I guess just like kind of notable experiences overall, like... Um, I remember, like, playing Mortal Kombat, like, at my cousin's house, um, that was kind of cool. That's not one of my favorite games, but it's definitely, like, a series that I'm more than familiar with, and I actually, like, I like it, and I just recently played Mortal Kombat 10, finally. Um, and, you know, next will be 11 at some point. Um, but anyway, I remember that, and I remember playing a lot of other games. Um, I remember... <laughs> What was it? Uh, Maximum Carnage, like that game. Oh my God, that the track was killer, and I'm not gonna hum that because you know there might be issues with copyright. I'm not taking that risk, but <laughs> you should look it up because um, it had a cool song. Um, but that was fun, and you know there's like a Simpsons game I remember. But uh, one of the biggest things that I remembered was actually playing the original like Tekken on PlayStation at again my cousin's house. And eventually getting a PlayStation on my own, um, I, got, I think at age 10, and, you know, playing different games on that. I remember, like, uh, NBA Live 98, that was pretty fun. Um, in terms of, like, major games, I wouldn't get another major game that, like, really heavily impacted me until I was 15, and that came with Metal Gear Solid. The other games were like cool that I played, but they didn't like, uh, like I said, they didn't really leave like a strong impact. It was more like a collection of experiences that left the impact. Um, and, well, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me back up. <laughs> Before Metal Gear Solid, there was another game that I do think has a strong impact, but I guess like, uh, it's kind of like Sonic in that it was noteworthy. I think with Metal Gear Solid, that was the one where it was really big on an emotional level. So, one of the big games, of course, I, mean, I guess it's more the series of games, is like the Pokemon games. How could I not forget that? Um, I mean, <laughs> how could I not remember that? Okay, so, um, I played Pokemon Red back in the day, and I got into the show, I got into the cards, I got into like everything. Um, and then, like, eventually, I played Pokemon Gold when that came out, and oh my god, it was somehow even better. It is like my favorite Pokemon game. Uh, you know, I played several Pokemon games over the years. Uh, I had, you know, played other ones on like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and all that good stuff. And eventually, um, I became more of a console kind of dude. Um, but there were some good games on Game Boy, like I played Animorphs of all things that was fun I don't know if that one was good but it was fun and you know what was good Yu-Gi-Oh Dark Duel Stories like I had fun with that and the music the music slapped it's kind of crazy it's like why why did it have so good music I mean uh, so much good music um and a lot of the Pokemon um tracks were pretty good too but let's talk about Metal Gear Solid like um so that game it was noteworthy because it, to me, pushed um, story forward in games. Because up until that point, in my opinion, or at least until I played Metal Gear Solid, like, yes, you had stories in games. Yes, they were there. Um, but did they hit you emotionally? It was subjective, sure. But I think with Metal Gear Solid, the idea was like, it hits you emotionally, but it also made you think. Um, and that was my thing for me and I'm gonna share something and I think I'm not sure if I shared it in another video Maybe not but uh One of the reasons why Metal Gear hit so hard for me like when I played the initial like Metal Gear Solid is that I, I Was going through some things uh, That's when I first like when I was like around 14 15 that's when I first started to like just question everything and I started dealing with like nihilism and Metal Gear Solid comes along and you know they had characters that were dealing with the same thing and you know I hadn't seen that in a game I hadn't really seen that anywhere they were dealing with the same thing they were 
uh, struggling with purpose and finding that. And a lot of the characters in there were straight up nihilist. And Snake, he was the same, but, you know, throughout the game, trying to get better with that. Uh, being pushed in the right direction, so to speak. And again, it was a game that made you think. And that was, like, it was great for me. And it was just, like, it was so, like, contained and had such atmosphere. It's one of those games that stuck with me and I think just really clicked with me, partially because of where I was at in life. But also, it just there's a lot going into that game, and there's a lot going into that going into that series, and I um, became a big fan of that, and so eventually, you know, I'd go on to play two and three and four, and someday five. I had played Metal Gear and Metal Gear Two like on ports um, as part of subsystems for three. Um, and for the record, I enjoyed most of my experiences with the franchise. I did not enjoy the ending of five. I enjoyed playing five. I did not enjoy the ending, and that kind of ruined that game for me. It was that horrible, personal opinion. Uh, horrible, <laughs> uh, so horrible that I didn't play any Metal Gear games for like four years because I was just like, I hate it. I hate what they did. <laughs> um, it's that serious for me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I think my high school years, they were a good spot for gaming because at that point, um, I, I, it was different for me. At that point, I had to pay for things on my own. And, you know, and we'll get to it later, but there's math in that, right? Like, before, my parents would get me stuff, right? They would get it for my birthday or for Christmas or just because sometimes. Um, now, when I became a high schooler, you know, I had to start um, getting games myself. They, they were pricey, so, you know, I would get allowed. So, really, it was still my parents' money until I got, like, um, a job. Um, in which case, I, I used some of the money to like buy it, new stuff. But anyway, for a while, I had to decide what I wanted to do with that. And like, you know, um, I couldn't afford like a PS2 for a while, so I got like um, a smaller version of the PS1. Uh, I got some games on that. Like, I think I got like, a, what was it? Dragon Ball Z, like Ultimate Battle 22. I don't know how many of y'all have played that game, but it's a weird, <laughs> weird game, kind of obscure. But um, it was interesting. I, I liked it despite some flaws. Um, that being said, one of the big things that I uh, experienced was, while well, still playing the PS1, was uh, Final Fantasy VII. It wasn't my first Final Fantasy game. My first Final Fantasy game was Final Fantasy VIII. And I got that for Christmas one year. But I was not a fan. I didn't get far into it before I said no. Um, I later did go and I later did beat it, but originally I said no and I um, tracked down Final Fantasy VII. I bought that my own money and I played it and it was legendary and it's still like a big thing like everywhere in my life because like, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake came out um, back in 2020 and whew, so much happened in there. but. So yeah, high school was an interesting period for me because I got like the PS2, and for the record, that PS2 is a beast. I still have my original, my original PS2. It's almost 20 years old, and I still have it. It's still kicking, and I still play it occasionally. Um, and it was, I bought that with my own money, and I, the first two games I got for it were Devil May Cry and Prince of Persia, Sands of Time. Both amazing games. Both uh, would be games that were like I definitely wanted to play more, and I explored their franchises, and they were both really cool. Devil May Cry is one of my favorite series, just like Metal Gear is one of my favorite series, and the Prince Persia: Sands of the Time trilogy is super fun. And for those who are saying, you know, they didn't like Warrior, Warrior Within, okay, you're entitled to your opinion, and I get that, but I liked all three games. All right, they were fun. Um, but yeah, so anyway. It was really cool back in high school because, like, I um, I bought a lot of my games, and that was very interesting to me. And I also like I uh, got to play other people's systems with ones that I didn't have. And I think that particular generation, um, by the time I got to college, I did get all the major consoles in that generation. So I had PlayStation Two, I had um, Xbox, and I had GameCube, and I had different games on all those. So you know, and. Uh, 
I gravitated towards action adventure games like hack and slashes and like ones that are typically difficult. But you know, I did like some just adventure games too. So there was some variety. And um, I remember like like a little before college, uh, one Christmas, I did ask for Dragon Ball Z Budokai Three, and my parents did get that for me. And that is one of my favorite games of all time. It's my favorite Dragon Ball Z game, and there are some really good ones out there. Um, I even did a video on this channel um, about that game and you know how cool that was and how math plays a role in it. Um, that being said, I went on to play a lot of different games, a lot, like, and I just had so much fun with that particular generation, like, um, where, you know, you had, like, the PS2 and Xbox and GameCube, like, man, because I felt like at that time, people were getting UC systems, they were doing this, uh, all these things, and they were trying to compete with each other, like, actually, you know, just really going at it. Now, you still have the competition, but it's less fierce, um, and so that's, that's interesting, and for the record, Nintendo and Sega definitely had a more violent sort of <laughs> conflict than like, you know, the PS2, Xbox, GameCube sort of area. So like the Genesis uh, and, you know, SC, sorry, <laughs> SNES and all that good stuff, man. It, it was crazy. But I would say that since you had like three companies competing, it, I, I feel like there was actual like reasonable competition and, and people were making games and it was just it was fun now it's time went on i did eventually get a ps3 and that was the only one that i got from that particular generation although i did play xbox 360 as well as the wii um and then for that following generation like i didn't play wii u but because i would later get the switch i did play a lot of wii u games on there um and then I did get PS4 eventually, and followed by the Switch, which was the last console that I bought. Um, with that in mind, it took a while because I just like, um, I wasn't thrilled with the state of gaming for a while, but uh, I eventually got over that and started playing some good games. And um, in terms of noteworthy games, th there are a lot of good ones, but in terms of games that like really hit me, um, I got Nier Automata. Um, that game, oh my god, that game. I played that game for two months. Two months. <laughs> there was a lot of content, a lot of different endings. It was just like, it's, it's a crazy thing. Like, it's a hack and slash that has some like shooter elements in there. Like, um, and that is crazy. It's a JRPG and it goes completely ham. It has to do with like, you know, the future and you have androids and you have alien machines there's a lot of philosophy it's dark and it's grim and it's got a lot of nihilism in it there are points because i still deal with nihilism i just deal with it better than when i was younger there are points in that game where on one level i wanted to stop and went oh man this is getting too real this is getting too deep but i couldn't because it was too awesome and it is one of my favorite games of all time. Oh wait, no. It's not just one of my favorite games of all time. It is my favorite game of all time. I remember that I did eventually decide on that because for a while I wasn't sure. But in any way, that game definitely makes you think as well. And it's just like so much goes on in that game and it's just like you feel it. It's a powerful work of art, beautiful game. And not just visually, although yes, it is beautiful visually. It's just like, the, the, the gameplay was amazing, the sound was amazing, the story was amazing, all the stuff that you could get from it is amazing. Um, and wow, this is going, <laughs> talking about some of my background is going a little longer than I expected, but that's fine because I'm having a blast and it's getting recorded, so I'm gonna use it. Um, and that's fine because I've talked about math and gaming in general, and this was more of a excuse to talk about my background, but I do wanna get to the uh, math and gaming eventually. But, so yeah, that was all cool. And I wanna get to the video that, <laughs> the video game that inspired this video. Horizon Zero Dawn. It is rare, very, very rare, that a game can creep up on me and instantly become one of my favorites. Nier Automata was one, and that was a deep, impactful game. Um. Now, Control. Control is another one. 
Control didn't hit me on like the same emotional level that Nier Automata did and that Horizon Zero Dawn did, but it was so fun to play. It was so weird, so wacky, so unbelievably cool. It just was, it was just awesome. It was just like a gamer's game. And so that's definitely one of my favorite ones too. It just didn't hit me the same way in the, that, that deep emotional level. It hit me on that like fun emotional level, you know? The other games are fun too, but this one is just like, it's pure unadulterated fun for me. Um, now for Horizon Zero Dawn, fun game, unique game, beautiful game. And it just makes you think, and it takes place in the future and there's just so much cool stuff and they address some really cool things in the past that you find out through uh, your game play and I think that's really cool. And I won't ruin that for you all, but know this, some of the stuff that you find out throughout the course of the game will rock you and it will make you think about some things that are going on right now because like, it's just, how could you not? It really touches on what does it mean to be human and what is our responsibility to this planet, to each other. What do we do when we find out everything that we know might not be as it seems, and how do we survive just at all? And it's just, they do everything so well. And Horizon Forbidden West, they haven't announced when it, it will come out, but uh, when it does, I will be getting that game. And oh, by the way, with Horizon Zero Dawn, one of the coolest things is, I think in promotion of Horizon Forbidden West, uh, Sony offered it up for free. And that was cool. That was super cool. And so I got it for free and I got to play it for free. And just for the record, I would have played it for $60. And that's saying something. I would have gotten that full price. Like, and, um, I would have been happy with it. <coughs> But I got to play it for free, and that's even better. So, yeah, that's like um, that's where I'm at right now. Like I've still been playing some games here and there uh, after that, but that was the last big game, and that hit me in some serious ways. I am actually still thinking about a lot of the things that happened in that game. Like it hit me on a deep and profound level, and that's that's beautiful to me because I feel like you know every medium grows through a phase where people will badmouth them and you know they won't get why you play or sorry why you enjoy that medium um and in video games that's definitely been the case like people didn't get why a lot of people were playing but you know what it kept on going it kept on getting stronger and now video games is a billion dollar in like industry you can win money by winning competitions and you can tell some incredible stories that are immersive in a way that no other medium can be because they put you right in it. And that's amazing. Like your actions are affecting the story, right? And you get to do so many cool things. So video games for me are one of the most important things. And I'm glad to like be alive during a time where I got to see them evolve and continue to flourish. And when I think about math and video games, like I said, I did some other videos and I'm going to leave a link to that in the description, so I'm not going to belabor the point in this video, but I think um, here's how I look at it, right? So you need math in order to construct the actual worlds in which you play in, and you need it for the gameplay. Uh, you also need it to just like be making the games in the first place, right? Um, you needed to have it all come together to be able to make money, to be able to pay employees. Then there's just so much that goes into it because when you're making that game, right, it ha you have to have a world that has certain rules with physics. You have to consider geometry. You have to consider the position of this, the position of that, how it all flows. And depending on which genre you're playing, that math might change a little bit, but there's definitely math. Right, because uh, if I play like a platform, for instance, there's so much that I have to consider there, and there's so much math that I have to consider in terms of like, oh, well, how do I get to this platform or like the next platform, or how do I do this and how do I do that and how do I move around? Whereas in like in a fighting game, I still have a lot of math to consider, but it's different, right? And I think that's all cool. And I have videos where I do dissect like particular games and how math plays a role in them, and. I won't talk about the games that I was talking about in this video at length, 
but I wanted to talk about a few and how Mac does go into all those games. And for the record, now I'm looking because I can see the time on my phone, and this is definitely going to be my longest video, which is saying something. Um, okay, so let's start with Sonic, right? Sonic goes fast. Sonic goes really, really fast. So when you're constructing that world, you have to construct environments where, okay, yes, you have to consider Sonic going fast and things to impede him and things along those lines. There's a lot of math that goes into all of it, right? There's math and construction of that world. There's math and how fast Sonic is going and how he's moving, how much distance he's covering over in time, how he's stopping when he's impeded, how he's recovering afterwards. There's a lot of math. There's time limits on those levels. There's math in that. There's math in the ring collection. And then later Sonic's game, uh, having a certain amount of rings, like 100 for instance, will allow you to do uh, to go supersonic if you've gathered the seven, like um, chaos <laughs> seven emerald chaos emeralds. There we go. The seven chaos emeralds. Um, you know, so there's math in all that. Um, and you know, it expands because you know it went from 2D to 3D, and there's a lot of math in both of those, but, but different, right? And there's math in the animation process. So there's a, there's a lot going on, and it's all really cool. And then you jump ahead to something like Metal Gear Solid, there's a lot of math that goes into that, right? Like you had Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 before uh, Metal Gear Solid, those are both 2D games. And then you get to Metal Gear Solid and things have to change, right? But no matter how you cut it, there's math in all of it, right? There's math in how Snake is moving in those games. There's math in, you, you know, your collection of different items, how much you can store. And there's math in the resource management because like, hey, well, I can only store a certain amount of items. So I want to carry this. I want to carry that. And, you know, you have to consider the patterns of the guards, how they're moving, how far you are from them. What should you be doing? You can strategize. And there's math in all of it. And that's really cool. And with Metal Gear Solid, they had to add a wrinkle that it had a voice acting. So there's math in recording all that. There's, there's math in the timing to say this or that. There's math in all of it. Math and animation, whether it's 2D or 3D. And, you know, it just gets bigger from there because, right, like each game expands and there's more to do and there's so much math that goes into all of it. Um, and, of course, you know, um, as we're talking about this, you know, there's, there's math in producing all of it. There's math in, like, uh what the company is doing with it because if they don't feel like this or that will make money then they won't do it so it's like and there's math in the budget behind all these games and but that being said if we're going on um uh, there's math in pokemon and I've, I've done a lot with that uh there's math in the dragon ball z games and i talked about that too um and like i said i'll leave some links in the descriptions but if we go to the next big game for me um Near Automata. I talked about that in another video, and there's just like so much math in it, right? And it's incredible to me. And it's the kind of game where, in addition to some of the things that I sort of mentioned, right? Because it's like there, there's math and uh, constructing the world, but like you also want to consider not only math from the production standpoint, but math from you, the consumer. Because with Near Automata, um, What's really cool is, yes, I have the game where I'm doing a million things and I want to get to that in a second, but it's like, I paid $60 for that game, right? That's not cheap for me. I work in education. I have for a decent amount of time and we don't make any kind of money. When you hear people say that, they are not lying. <laughs> so, you know, you gotta choose uh, how you spend your money wisely. And with Nier, like Atomina, there was so much good press about it. I took that gamble, and it was worth it. I got hundreds, literally hundreds of hours out of it. And that alone, like, I feel justifies getting that game. And that's not even covering the, like, intangible things that I got out of it. So it, it's a, it was a pretty good deal for me. Um... And with the game itself, you know, like I said, there, there's math in how you construct those worlds. There's math in how you fight. There's math in how you level up and how you uh, have your resources. There's just math all over the place. It's an RPG. It's a JRPG. So much math. And like I said, I did a video on that, but uh, it, it gets crazy. And another one of my favorite series is Devil May Cry. 
so much math in that too. Um, it's a hack and slash game. You know, you have to collect uh, different uh, orbs to like power up, and among other things. And there's a lot of math and like uh, fighting mechanics. Um, and there's just so much in there. And I think I uh, did talk about like uh, Devil May Cry in another video. Um, there's been a lot of videos. <laughs> But yeah, so there, there's a lot of math and all that. And then like with Horizon Zero Dawn, that's another big game for me. Um, there's a lot of math in that, like in terms of like resource management and how it all comes together. It's a pretty game. It's a, an expansive game. So, you know, you have to consider things like geometry. You have to consider things like physics. You have to consider how it all flows. And Sony put so much money into like, uh, I think, what is it? Gorillas? Uh, it, putting so much money into that process and they knew it was going to be big and rightfully so and so it was really cool and then like you know you have to also collect a bunch of different items in that game and some of them are items that are like are warning in their own right regard because you're like okay well so I have to collect X amount of items is that worth it and it's like well yes uh, partially uh, because if you're a completionist, it'd be nerve-wracking not to get them. But they also distribute a lot of like really good lore that help flesh out the game. So it's like it'll be worth it on your time, sorry, worth it of your time to do it. I'm sorry, I've been talking for a bit, and I'm like, woof. Um, but yeah, so that's great. And I know with control, like, um, you know, there's a lot of math that goes into building that world and things that happen in the world, and like you have psychic powers in that world, so. A lot of physics, a lot of crazy stuff in there. Uh, but yeah, back to Horizons of Dawn. It's got me hyped because, right, it's the kind of game, like I said, that I would have paid full price for because it's an incredible game. But I played it for free. So I got a lot out of that. And yeah, I spent a lot of time playing it. But it was worth it because it was an experience that I rather enjoyed that I got a lot out of it in like a tangible sense because it was a game that I got for free, but also in an intangible sense because I just like, I got like so much emotional stuff out of it. But um, yeah, so <laughs> I've been talking for over half an hour in this video, making it officially my longest video. Uh, Cause I think before this, it was just like 26 minutes, which was already crazy. Like these math and gaming videos have gotten increasingly longer. <laughs> but yeah, so, with that in mind, math and gaming do go better together than you might think, and both are really important to me. And one of the coolest things about doing these videos is um, it doesn't hurt how I game. It enhances it because I'm able to think about things in you know some deeper ways and how that could help my gameplay and my experience. And so I feel like it's been pretty amazing. Oh, and another really cool game that I played um, is like Spider-Man Miles Morales. That was cool. A lot of math in that too. Uh, and the same with like, you know, the PS4 Spider-Man uh, game. Um, also, Tomb Raider trilogy. Good stuff. Like the Tomb Raider reboot trilogy. Um, but I was trying to close it up, so I'm going to get back to that. I could talk about games all day. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I enjoy both math and gaming. I'm going to enjoy talking about both of those things more in the future. I hope this helps someone enjoy uh, math a bit more, and I hope that this helps people kind of see a little bit more of my gaming history and how much I enjoy it. Like, it's incredible, and I'm glad that more and more people every day are doing it. It's cool stuff. So I will see you in the next video. Professor Prime out.